rolled out another one of their can't miss offers. Trying DraftKings Sportsbook is easy, so what are you waiting for? Get in on all the action right now. To celebrate the return of basketball, DraftKings Sportsbook is giving new players 100 to 1 on any feature matchups this week. That's right. All you have to do is be and bet $1 on any feature matchup this week. And if your team wins, you cash a crisp $100. While we're all excited for the return of basketball, let's not forget football playoffs are right around the corner. So head to the app right now to check out all the DraftKings daily odds boosts. DraftKings is safe, secure, and reliable, making it easy for you to deposit and withdraw your money at your convenience. Download the top-rated DraftKings Sportsbook app now and use promo code FIL68 when you sign up to get one of the 100 to 1 odds on any feature matchup this week. That's code FIL68 for new players to get a shot at $101 on any featured matchup this week for a limited time only at DraftKings Sportsbook. You must be 21 or older for those who live in New Jersey, Indiana, or PA only. Restrictions apply. See DraftKings.com slash sportsbook for details. Gambling problem? Call 1-800-GAMBLER or in Indiana, 1-800-9-WITH-IT. Welcome to another episode of Blue Blood on the Main Line. I have uh, a great person today, Villanova legend, Big Five Hall of Fame inductee, Curtis Sumter, thank you for being on the show. Thanks, Jay, for having me, man. I appreciate it. Uh, I like what you're doing. And uh, couldn't make me happier, man, to be a part of it. Oh, man, it's, it's great. It's exciting. So um, there, there is so much to talk about. And I looked a little, I looked a, a little bit on uh, the Villanova all-time list. I think you're, you might be the only one that's points, rebounds, and I want to say the other one was blocks of uh, top 20 or top, top 16 of points, rebounds, and uh, blocks. And I think uh, that, that, that says a lot about who you were at Villanova and, and how much of a legend you are. Um, but before we even get there, let's uh, talk about uh, your AAU days. How did we meet each other? Um, how did we meet? I think uh, we, we met, you were new to the team, and I yeah. was like kind of back and forth between the Panthers and the, the Wolfpack, another team. Uh, you know, that, you know, had a bunch of my good friends, one of the best players in the country at the time, Lenny Cook, uh, one of my other great friends, Brian Ramondi. And, uh, you know, I had a difficult choice to make whether to continue to play with that team or join more of a national ranked team like the Panthers. And, um, you know, once I made my decision to be a Panther full time, I think that's when you were like kind of joining and we just kind of connected uh, ever since then. Yeah, and I always tell her on on the on the back, the back behind the scenes uh, with that. So here it is. If you remember our first year, Tristan Smith was on the uh, team from Amityville. He's a point guard, and my high school coach Jack Agostino had a relationship with Gary Charles, who was the founder of the Long Island Panthers. And he said, "I want your guard." And he and uh, Coach Ag told Gee, he said, "Look, if you have my guard, you have to take my big." Didn't even want me on the team, <laughs> you know. You know, he was looking for a guard. He wasn't looking for it because, as you know, that first year we were stacked as well. Mm -hmm. So, um, you know, and, and here it was. I, I was there, right in the bench, mm -hmm. and I was towards the end. And then, you know, we 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 met each other, and then we never looked back from there. So, and, and I'm happy that we did. I'm I'm happy I was benched, Kirk. That's the first <laughs> only in my life I'm happy I was benched. <laughs> well, you weren't the only one benched. Uh, I, I definitely spent some time on there. We definitely had some great conversations on there, but. Like you said, our team was really, was really, really stacked. We were maybe sophomores or something like that. You know, yeah, we, we were sophomores really going seniors, to You know, trying to get, you know, college scholarships. So we understood that. But, I mean, our bench was, like, probably the best bench if you really want to, you know. Oh, yeah. You know what? Do you, go ahead. Fill some of the names out. I mean, besides uh, you and I, we had uh, Sebastian Telfair, you know, who was mm – -hmm. You know, very, very good. We had uh, John Quintana, also out of Lincoln High School in New York. I was really good. And, um, you know, our, our, that other guy was, was kind of flip-flop between – we had, like, Major Wingate. 
Major Wingate was there at one time. Major, those who don't know, I know the Carolina people will know. Yeah. And the people down south don't know. Major Wingate, he had major game. Let's put it that way. <laughs> you know, Major was a problem. Major was real good. He was a big. Yep, yeah, I remember that. We we had a lot of guys. And then at one time, I can't remember. Charlie came. Charlie filled in the way. But when did Charlie come? Charlie, he, was that the first year? Or was that our second year? Uh, Char Charlie came more our second year. Charlie yeah. came more our second year. And um, that's when we, that's when the team was like ours. Like, like Charlie didn't pay no dues. <laughs> oh, right, right. He didn't. Well, yeah, Charlie just came. Charlie just came right. in. And it, it was just smooth sailing, man. Like, yeah, we, we had to ride that pine because uh, it was Tristan. Remember uh, Eric Ferguson from Hempstead? They had uh, Eric King. Where, where, where did Eric King go to high school at? St. John's. Say that again? St. John's. No, where did he go oh, to high school? He went to, he went to Lincoln. Right, Lincoln. Um, we had, I noticed like two other guys. We And then, and then we had players we had that were. A little bit like from, Kevin Bell with the yeah. guys. Um, I mean, we we had we had some some really 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 good guys. Tavares really? Bell, yeah. yeah. So we had some guys, you know, who were really good basketball players, and we 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 were you know good for our age. But I mean, if you think about it, I mean, of course they would be featured. You know, we still had to uh, to learn. You know, right. we were just we were really just starting. You know, I know me me for one, I was about a year and a half, two maybe into it. Yeah, yeah, that's true. And um, we, we paid our dues that first year. And then our second year, like you said, we we was rolling. Um, arguably one of the greatest AU teams in history. I, I, I'll say this. No one has ever swept the whole entire summer circuit like the way we did. We didn't lose one tournament. And we took every major tournament it was. Do you remember that? Mm -hmm. Remember? Uh, yeah. Remember? Do you remember when we, I think we went to Double Punk was a good tournament. So we actually, we did the Triple Crown and I don't even think it exists anymore. It was the Hostra tournament. It was, um, we took Rumble in the Bronx and all that in between. Um, Vegas. Hostra, Vegas big time. And then, then we did Cali. Double Punk. And then Cali. Yeah. Cali. And I think we lost one, actually the whole summer, we lost one game because we were in a Double Pump in Cali. And uh, Guy told us. No, Jay, we lost. We actually lost the game in Vegas. Remember, we lost to the Philly team. <laughs> we lost to a couple of my friends out here, uh, Mike Cook. Okay. Um, that was the four, right, right. No, you're right. That was the game. I'm mixing up the tournament, right? Because yeah. it, it was pool play, right? It was pool play. So I'm mixing yeah. up my tournaments. It was Vegas. Guy told us this is pool play. It's about seeding because you know it's not about elimination. We playing around and we playing around. These guys were hungry. They beat us. And after that, we was like, all right, let's stop playing. And we yeah. beat breaks off of everybody. <laughs> yeah, I think the closest yeah. game was a championship game against Tim Thomas players. And that was what? It was a 12, 15 point game. Yeah. I mean, we yeah. ran through that whole whole tournament. And I think that's when everybody knew that, you know, our team was, was really, really good. We just had, you know, so many different pieces, you know, and then. I mean, we had what nobody else had, man. We had we had Jay Frey. You know what I'm like, I tell people all the time, man. They don't they don't understand it, man. They don't understand it. Uh, you were just, you know, one of those players that was. You went from one year being, you know, this nice, timid guy on the court, you know, not trying to dominate, to all of a sudden being this guy who we saw, like if you. If you focus a little bit, you know, more offensively, you were you a killer out there, man. And I think it showed. And we wouldn't have gotten as far as done what we've done without you, seriously, because well, at the time, the best, the real best players were a lot of the big guys. So we needed somebody to hold that down, to hold that paint you down. Guys. And you did. Yeah. You did. I appreciate it. But, you know, like I said, and it's interesting. If you ask, It's depending on who you ask. Because you ask me, I think you, you were – you were that utility knife and you were darn good. It wasn't just like, a, you know, do a little bit of this. Do, no, no, no. You did it very well. You bring the ball up, shoot, post. We had, and it's, and I think it happened at Villanova as well, whatever we needed to do as a team, if we needed to rest someone, if we need to adjust, you were that guy that allowed us to do that. Um, and, and that, where we jump into the Villanova part of it, that, that was huge, you know, and so here it is. We have this big summer and we have now the recruiting season and Coach Wright's having his first recruiting class. He goes from Hostra, right, to the Big East, make that monumental jump. And here it is. He's coaching at Villanova University. He has his first recruiting class and he gets the number two recruiting class in the country. 
I mean, that was huge for him. That was huge for the program. And that was huge for us. I, I spoke uh, recently with Randy about that, about how we all came together. How do you remember the recruiting uh, process playing out uh, as we all decided to go to Villanova eventually? Um, the recruitment process was, uh, was, was, was really, really fun for me, um, <clears throat> for all of us, I'm sure, just getting attention uh, from big time schools, coaches, um, so in, in Villanova, just at the time, uh, where, you know, it was as far as basketball was not, um, one of the, the top schools at the time. And at the time, you know, we thought like you had to be, you know, in a prime time school to, to get the looks to potentially have a career future in basketball. As we know now, it doesn't matter if you're good, you put that time in and you work at your craft, they'll find you anywhere you are in this world. So for me, I had a little bit of, of juggling between do I pick, you know, one of these power five, you know, big time schools that are after me or do I, you know, consider Villanova where, who I just like the coaching staff. Didn't know anything about Villanova. Mm -hmm. uh, if anybody knew anything about Villanova, uh, my family or my circle was, was my mom, just because she worked with people from Villanova you know, working on in the financial district for over like 35 years. So she knew what Villanova was. I had no idea. So she she was the one who kept saying, hey, you know, don't forget about Villanova. Don't forget about Villanova. Right. Uh, on top of me, just, you know, liking Joe Jones, Freddie Hill, Coach Wright, Brett Gunning, um, Billy Lang, you know, at the time at the staff. Um, so it, it just all fell into place. And then also just talking with, you know, Alan at the time, because Alan had first committed there, which surprised me. Um, I thought Alan was probably going to pick a bigger school, but, you know, he opened up my eyes a little bit more, you know, by, by choosing them because I felt he was kind of seeing what I saw, but I didn't want to verbalize that because, mm -hmm. again, you know, you got North Carolina and, and Kansas and all these other big-time schools at UConn. I, you say Villanova at that time, it was kind of looking like, why would you choose them? But, um, you know, and then Randy, you know, having those conversations with Randy, hey, who's recruiting you? And the name coming up, Villanova, Villanova, you know, and I know his relationship with Freddie Hill and talking to him. So I just was like, you know what? Maybe Villanova is, you know, a pretty good school. So I started to really, really consider them. And um, it, what really changed my mind was just when uh, we played in that tournament in Vegas and, and we played against Allen and, um you know, I got I got to put this out there. You know, Alan tried to check me, and you know, I had to, you know, show him who who was that guy at the time. You know, explain, but, explain what that means. Explain how, how you show how you show. Hey, they, uh, they, know, Alan, Alan gets no breaks here. There's no way to get any breaks here. Let, let's go. No, nah, I want to put Alan this out there in the street, but no, that's my man. I love him. <laughs> brother. I'm only joking. But anyway, he got hurt during that game, and uh, we wound up making it to the championship, and we right. didn't come to the championship game. He chose to stay with Alan and, uh, you know, when Alan was in the hospital or whatever, and, you know, he called me, wished me good luck and everything, said he wished, you know, he could be there. Um, and it was a big game because we was either going to players or Melo, wherever we was going against somebody, it was a real, real big game. And uh, all the coaches made sure they made themselves known that they was there. Yeah. It wasn't, but that, that call meant something to me. I was like, you know what? I know how this game is. I know these coaches want to be here. This is Villanova. He's competing against these big time schools, but it just showed me some real character. And that, that just went a long way. So when it came to my decision making, you know, I put that, you know, that and I matched it up with all the other coaches. And I tried to just see like how my experiences was with them, like, you know, what I thought about them on a personal level and not so much basketball. You know what I mean? Because everybody right. took basketball and recruiting you, but you know, everybody dripped you know, some personal stuff in there, but I just tried to just match it all up. And I just felt that, you know what, that was probably the best place where I would feel the most comfortable. Um, Alan had already committed. Um, his family kind of knew my family. So mm -hmm. that kind of made it like, okay, all right. I know somebody, you know, we can go there together. And then uh, you were just back and forth um, with the whole process. Um, I knew, I had my feeling, I was like, if you do go to college, you will go where I go. So, Right. Well, we spoke about that. I could talk you into that. You right. Know I mean? So I was like, okay, that could be three. And Randy, I wasn't so sure, but um, 
But yeah, once I started really hearing that Randy was was going down, you know, want to do it, then that's when we all start talking about just doing something right. special. Right. Like, you know, we can go anywhere we want to go, but let's go somewhere and build. And those were the conversations Coach Fight had. And um we just did it, you know, we just just happened. I think uh, a lot of people don't realize, like during that era, that we, as a bunch, we were kind of unique and special in, in that way where we actually spoke about doing something special. We spoke about making a change, making a difference. And it wasn't just riding a wave that already existed or riding someone else's wave. And there's nothing wrong with that because guys that's coming in now, they're riding in a wave that was created from us, which when we came, at least there was some kind of foundation that was built from the other Villanova grades prior to that. And then the seniors that did all they can adjusting to a new coach, a new system to lead us as well. Namely, Ricky Wright was the big there and um, uh, Derek Snowden and uh, my guy to this day, um, Gary Buchanan. I speak to G all the time, man. I love, I, love, I, call, I still call him G baby. I love him. Man. I love that dude. So, um, you know, we were unique in that way. And uh, what three of us played together? You remember, did did A Ray play in the the game? So IS eight is for those who don't know is this um, great fall league, summer league. It's a great tournament style base league that um, that is very intense. It was if you if you, if you will, would you like it? Especially you write it in a heart. You and BK. Um, I would call it the Rutgers of high school basketball in the East Coast. Like at at, the, at its time, like it, like how you had to prove yourself at Rucker Park, you had to prove yourself at ISA, and um, they without, I would, without all the shenanigans though, like, all, all the shenanigans. You had, bring, you had to bring your game, or you was in the paper the next day. Yes, <laughs> matter of fact, you didn't bring it. So. That was the paper the next day, but you were minutes after your game, you was on the internet. Remember the scout? Remember the? <laughs> remember that all the big scouting reporting agencies yeah. was there. Right. And they, 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 matter of fact, it's live. They they writing about you uh, as it's happening. So um, and it's real intense. It's a small gym. Everyone's on top of you. And then again, no one could beat our AAU team. We was kicking everyone. Still, we took all comers. We took the, everyone from the Nike circuit. We we dominated the, the Adidas circuit. So then now they create this team that they think could potentially beat us. Speak about that. So, like I said, well, well, the Panthers. We I think we took New York. Uh, I think for a little while, New York was held by Riverside Church. As far as the AAU program, yeah. that was you know consistently just. You know, winning has some of the best players, um, all Americans. And I think the Panthers, you know, we started to get guys who probably wasn't highly touted, you know, for years, just kind of finding their way late. A lot of late bloomers right? You know, that turned out to be some really, really good players and dogs. And by that time, we established ourselves not only within the city, but in the country. So now it's like we're just trying to find somebody to play our team. So now they're – you know, bringing guys from all over. They're bringing in All-Americans. Um, who, Jamario Davis, you know, mm -hmm. was a really, really good guy. I think with Alabama, Chris Taff, you know, being a good guy, Pitt. Sebastian, um, the Juice, uh, Ramel Bradley, Kentucky. They fly in LeBron James. They they bring in... Uh, Ron um, Clark was there. Who's that? Ron Clark. Karan Clark. Karan was nice. I yeah. love Karan, man. Yeah, I, I, me too. My first time, I think, playing basketball was, I think we were on the same team, like, real young. Um, But, but yeah, like, they had a really, really good team. And uh, I think some other players in the city. And and uh, Allen wasn't on our team. No. Because we had committed. I wanted to start, you know, trying to build that chemistry. So I, I said, yo, Gee, like, can we, can we get Allen to join our team? Right. Um, this was, you know, um, and this was before, was it before that game? Did he play with us that whole I, that game? I think it was that game because we, remember we had Taekwon Dean and Taekwon couldn't make that game. Right, right, right. Okay, yeah. So that's that's what it was. Yeah. So Taekwon Dean, who's on our team, Louisville, legend, um, baby Kobe, right? Right. He couldn't make that game up from uh from, from Philly or or, or uh, South Jersey. Jersey, yeah. So I said, Gee, can we get Allen on the team? Because, you know, since we got this Villanova connection, let's try to build now. Allen came on the team. And it was good for Allen, too, because Allen didn't play his senior year. No. You know what I mean? And Allen had just as much opportunity as me to be an All-American, but there was you. 
<laughs> yeah, it was you. You know what I mean? So you you took that spot. Um, but I mean it was us three, you know, fighting for that for that one right. ticket. And um, so it was good that for him to get play at that high level, you know, after missing his whole senior year, because I mean, it's nothing like that. I mean, I know he had a better senior year at Villanova, but you know, I missed my real senior year, you know what I mean, as well. Yeah. So I get that. You when you especially when his team is really good. And Heights would do something special. I mean, they won championships right. in a row. So he was coming from a pretty good program. So I, I get that feeling. You but are yeah. preaching, you are preaching to the choir when it talks about having a good team and missing out on the year because of injury. You are preaching to the choir, my friend. <laughs> I know all too well. <laughs> what it man, we man, shoot, that was two years. We we woo, national championship. I think our junior, you know what? Before I even get to that, let, let's Let's talk about uh, the current team. I wanted to uh, go over your thoughts on the current team, how we're doing so far, what uh, what do you like, what we're doing offensive, defensive, or just as a system, as a program, and, and do any plays stand out or any plays excite you for any particular reason? Um, I really, really like this team. I haven't really watched them much. Um, maybe just maybe three games mm -hmm. so far this year, but um, I just think that they're very, very deep. Um, I mean, when I, when I watch them, when I watch them, they can come in at waves. And I, I'm mm -hmm. not sure if uh, Cosby Roundtree is playing, if he's still injured. But um, if he's back, if he's playing, like he still, you know, brings another, you know, element of, of leadership. I mean, they just got guys just, just flowing in and out. I mean, senior leadership. Um, I definitely think they're a really good team as far as the individual talent. Uh, Colin is, is very, very great. I like, you know, the pace in which he plays. Um, you really can't speed him up. You know what I mean? You can, mm -hmm. I think, he's deceptively quick, you know, and fast. You think, like, okay, you, he can't beat you here, but before you know it, he doesn't beat you to the spot. And he's strong, you know, to get there and hold guys off and hold his own, playing the paint a little bit. Um, I love the young kid, uh, uh, Moore. I mm -hmm. really like him, man. I really do. Um, you know, he'll get better. You know, he'll get more aggressive on a defensive end. Um, but he's very, very skilled. Um, I would like to see him attack more um, and don't settle for the jumper. But he definitely does have a really good pull up. Mm -hmm. He's got a really good, solid team. I mean, and then Jeremiah, I mean, what, what can oh, you really say man, about him, man? I watch him and <clears throat> I mean, I think of just as far as his game and his development from his freshman year to now. Yeah. I see a little bit of myself in him. I was just about to say that. As far as like um coach letting him expand his game, you right. know? Cause because we don't know if he was able to do that last year really, because right. that's not what was needed of him. The same way, you know, I had to what was needed of me, you know, going as from freshman to sophomore, from freshman year, you know, I was lucky if I got a chance to shoot the ball. You know what I mean? To get the ball, but going to the sophomore year, it was like, okay, this is what we need. And then, you know, I was able to show what I really can do. You know, it wasn't just in practice every day with me feeling like I can't play my game, you know, but it's what the team needs and what's best for the team. And I think what's best for the team is him expanding his game because he really, really is good. And you got to take advantage of what the defense gives you. So, um, yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And I think, um, uh, you're right on. You're spot on. And it's interesting you said that because that's exactly what I was thinking. And for those who was watching from day one, Jeremiah Robinson Earl is like a uh, later version of you. He's more po like uh, he's more post than you were, and you were more perimeter than he was. But overall, in terms of the inside game, outside game, very very similar. It's uh, what Coach Wright envisioned. Um, you, I remember when you played, uh, again, like you said, that first year wasn't so much about shooting. It was about making right reads, finishing at the basket. And then you did a lot of work with Coach Jones in the offseason or definitely after every single practice, we would watch you put in that extra work over and over, relentless. And it really paid off. And it, it, now if you speed up to junior year, we are playing um, in the tournament and we know we had the ACL tear. But leading up to that, what people didn't realize Going into the recruiting class, I'm all American. I'm supposed to be one and done. Injuries doesn't happen. Then everyone is trying to figure out what coaches grooming Randy. You became our first 
go-to guy. And at that time, people didn't know there was talks. You were going to go, what was it, like mid to late first round before that injury? Before that injury, definitely um, possible first round pick. And um, I think a little bit was contributed to just playing on the USA team as well, you know, mm -hmm. prior to that summer. And but we really had a good, you know, junior year and um, I played well. Um, we all played well. And I think Alan and I might have been, I forget what year it was, like the, the second best tandem in scoring in the nation. So I think, right. you know, we, we all helped each other out, you know what I mean? Give each other looks, you know, because everyone was doing so well. And I just think that, you know, once coach figured out how to play me or how we could match because right. our office in the beginning was, was totally different. You know what I mean? Like it was, you know, my, my position was what you see is developed. You know what I mean? I was, you know, a, a ducking guy, you know, which is not my game. You know what I mean? I'm not, could I do it? Yes. I had some success with that, but it wasn't to our advantage. And I think once, you know, I was allowed to do more, I think it opened the floor for, for Allen to be Allen, you know, because because Randy got that jump shot as he developed, but Randy, mm -hmm. you know, could beat his man, take his man in the basket. So if I'm clogging a paint up, you clogging a paint up, you know what I mean? Like Ooh, it's, it's not, not work. it's not helping him. Then once you got to back off him, then he going to rock you to sleep, hit that jumper, mm -hmm. you know, Al, you know, Allen definitely going to get his man in the air. Definitely going to get his man with a, with a head fake or hezzy. He's going to get to the basket. That little jab. He's a jab. Yeah. Remember, A-Ray hold the ball, just jab, jab, jab. jab. And I think we all just started, you know, playing. I think those open gyms helped, too, because I think he started to see, like, you know, how we played in those open gyms. And um, we just meshed well. And then, plus, you know, I was able to, I think, just guard bigger guys, too, kind of helped us. Yeah. I, think and that was I, to him, I think I can guard, you know, bigger, bigger guys than myself. And that was what helped us a lot with the ability of you and Randy being able to guard bigger players. Uh, what a lot of people don't understand is the preparation that went into the success that we had as a team in our four year stint. It's just like you said, a lot of those summers. You're, do you remember when they had Big Turk from Coppin State and they had uh, that Big Turk came in, Alvin Williams came in and John Haynes. And I think this is going into our junior year because remember uh, we were sophomores at the time, and you remember they had them. What we didn't know, remember uh, what was it? It was A Ray and Randy was talking about jumping. Uh, John Hayes, tell, tell the whole story. Tell like so we there, we hooping. Tell tell it all. Tell it all. It's, it's a good story to the, to hear. Uh, you know, John. You know, those guys were definitely at the end of their careers, but they were they were doing what you know um, we wish we can do now, and what some guys still do now is come back. You know what I mean? And really, you know, uh, give us some wisdom um, as people who play for Villanova, but also their professional wisdom um, about what it's going to be like once you leave campus, you know, you try to continue this. So that's what they were doing uh, for us. But at the same time, we're, we're basketball players, we're competitive. Uh, and all we did at the time, because we didn't do anything, but we heard about what Alvin Williams and those guys did. And I think right. that was done purposely. Um, which was good for us because when they came in the gym, what did we want to do? We wanted to prove ourselves. And, and I think maybe Alan was getting the best of, of John that day. And, 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 you know, John's competitive, but he's not going back down. I mean, Alan's a 19 year old, but I think Alan just maybe slipped up just a little bit. And uh, John just kind of John, but this is so, so John is one of my, my best friends still to this day. Him yes. and Alan, we didn't talk about the story all the time, all the time. Right. Right. And uh, Alvin was like, and John was like, John was like, no, I wasn't going to do anything. So he said, but I just wanted them to know that I was here, that you you can't be talking to people in any kind of way. So right. he just put a little pressure on him. But it was it was it was like a big brother trying to, you know, have a have a moment, you know, with his little brother, like, hey, or a father son moment. Like, hey, you might have crossed the line. But us being young and being, you know, having fun with it. Randy was like, yo, you know. If you want to jump on my, you know, I'm there. Yeah, yeah. And then, and, then, and then Alvin Williams heard of him and said, jump who? Jump who? Yo, and, and then he was like, like hey, 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 yeah. Turk. And he yeah. called everyone together. Remember that? <laughs> he was like, whoa, what's up? We, we jumping who? Who are you going to jump? So, but you know, Villanovans will love this, man. So, again, yeah. we're in the gym. 
And what we didn't know, Coach Wright um, had told them, look, I think this class is special. We can get them going, you know, see what they're made of. And then they came in there guiding us. But, you know, part of just, again, little brother, we take it, little bros take everything serious and everything means the world, especially when big bro's there. Big bro has a vision, little brother doesn't. So we playing and Turk was, you know, he was their boy from, he went to Copper State. He, Turk was like a, a taller Ricky Wright, <laughs> just built that. What? But he a was meaner doing. Ricky Wright. You know what yes. I'm saying? Like Turk borderline, you know, Turk crazy. Yeah. Good guy, and, great and, guy. Love him. And we him. knew it. And they was trying to just punk us. You know, punk, rightfully so. You, you you know what? If you're going to be tough, you're going to play East Coast basketball, you're going to get punked mm -hmm. if, if you don't fight and take this. You, I, ain't, I ain't handed a mantle to you. Nothing's going to be handed. You're going to have to take it. Not ask for it. Not play well enough to earn it. No, 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 no. You have to take this. So we, we, I remember that. We were playing, and i never forget, Brady was, I remember Brady was like, yo, you know, if you need me, just like what you said, yo, you, you want to do this? And then Alvin Williams heard it was like, hold on. <laughs> Y'all jumping who? Jumping who? And then after, it was like a week long, though. A week, they were kicking out tail. We were going back after them for a week. It was it was like hell week. And at, and that was like the end of that week where, we're you know, you just had enough. And, and it yeah. come time for something else. So A-Ray was, you know, speaking his mind. And I never forget. And this is why I love them so much. At the end of all of that, they sat us down. Remember that? They sat us down and said, they, they, they took that whole tough uh, guy persona off and they smiled and said, yo, you good, baby. And I remember they gave us, they dapped us up and said, coach just wanted us to test you. It, it was yeah. like, uh, do you remember Miracle on Ice? Remember the I movie? Know, I, know the, I know the movie for sure. Okay. So there was a part of the movie where the coach has a player that he coached before that he has a relationship with that is nice. He's mm -hmm. not on the U.S. team. He brings them in. He's kicking everyone's tail in practice, almost, and and they kind of feel a certain way. You know, they, they feel uneasy about it, and um, it was um, it was a little bit similar to what Coach was doing with us. You know, he they are part of the family, but they weren't a part of the current group. And you know, we again we're trying to stake our claim, and and I I, I appreciate what they did. You know, to this that's day, that's that's he, a that's a fun a, that's a that's a cool story. He brought us down some because I think we were talking so much about trying to do something, do something and be together. And this is going to be our class that we came in there cocky. We definitely yeah. came in there cocky. And, but we were nice guys. But, but when it came to basketball, we a were New, a New York we Eagle want to play with anybody who right. wasn't a freshman. When we came right. in, like, no, we just went out every drill, every five on five, whatever, a six freshman against. The rest of the team and i think that yeah. was the wrong <laughs> attitude in the beginning you know what i mean that was definitely wrong attitude and i think that was why it took a while for us to really come together a little bit because again you know you have senior leaderships who's still adjusting to a new coach right. and then we're getting this hype but we we learned to be brothers and those relationships we you know i mean derek snowden um and we still talk a little bit yeah. uh you know what i'm saying ricky and those guys Mama sully andrew sullivan Sully was strong. I, I remember, yo, Ricky, I remember the summer coming in. This is before I had any kind of injury. If you, if you remember our open gyms and uh, Jake Nevin, mm -hmm. very athletic. I would run the floor and just dunk. Boom, boom, boom. Man, we got to the season. Ricky Wright beat the crap out of me. Remember, he used to, it was, <laughs> he used to beat the crap out of me Andrew every Sullivan. single practice. I think Andrew Sullivan never told me he has some personal against me, but nothing like for real, but, but I think right. he, he took a challenge because I mean, right. he wouldn't let me get anything, but it helped me out a lot. We had it. He sat next to me every day with laugh, joke with me, you know, we get on that court, Andrew would beat me down, but it, yeah. you know, because I thought I was tough, but I was like, that is just a different, you know, physicality. You know, we thought I, we thought we were good. We were yeah. good, but for our level, we weren't ready right. for college. And I think we came into you know some men, guys who've been in the weight room four years, uh, knew the game better than we mm -hmm. knew the game. wasn't just running up and down, and they showed us. And it was like, oh, they they put us in our place. Like you guys are a little cocky, but we're gonna put you in your place. And uh, once they put us in our place, I think you know that that led the way for us to be, you know, what we were. Yeah, and I think uh, Gary Buchanan was very instrumental for my development because he, um, 
he allowed me to be a freshman, but I also, he provided a safety net. I remember he was schooling me what, what to do in campus, you know, you know, where the good place to eat, um, say this, don't say that. Mm-hmm. And G really, really looked out. And then we were roommates on the road. So right. when we when we had a road game, he was my roommate. And it was like a real loving way, man. And to this day, man, I don't go a month without speaking to uh, G. And we always just stay in touch. And um, it brings me to remember our, that, that infamous practice when we literally, when we went up and down, I want to say maybe two, three hours of nonstop, no timeouts, no breaks. Do you remember it was hours we went up and down? It was because Gary is a senior. He was red hot. Remember he was hitting one, two steps over half court. A-Ray, we didn't understand that. Uh, no one, you just don't know that. No one knew Alan Ray was going to be as good as a shooter that he was. You understand? He's going to be one of the best in the school history. Yeah, I didn't know Alan was going to be able to shoot the like, ball. No, Alan, not like that. High school, you know what I mean? He, but I I didn't know Alan was going to be. When we got to college and I started seeing the way Alan shot the ball, I was like, like where did this come from? Right. So that's how it worked. You know? So we're in that practice, and Coach Wright is trying to, again, establish the toughness that is common ground now for Villanova uh, teams. He wanted to establish that toughness and G hits a shot. A-Ray comes back and hit a shot. Because remember, we, you know, freshman, we want to all stake our claim. And G hits another three, A-Ray hits a three. And they exchange them back and forth. And I remember, I remember looking at Gary Buchanan and, and realizing how good he was when he kind of like looks at A-Ray and, and has an attitude saying, who do you think you are? Comes over, takes one dribble pass half court and bang, Avery comes back hits from the hash mark. And Coach Wright, Luda Wilson, he said, "Hey guys, listen, this is not basketball. You got to play defense. You know we're going to keep going until we learn how to get stops." And then he looks at uh, the two of them. He goes, "Gary, Avery, and don't you dare think about missing." So hold on. So we got to get stops. And if Gary or Avery miss, we're gonna still run. So what what, what, what we doing? <laughs> what we doing here? <laughs> and then we we literally ran, I remember that we ran over two hours. That's not the whole practice. We have regular practice. We had stuff after that. We ran nonstop for two hours. Then we had Miss Baranski class that same night. It was a six thirty class, and we fell asleep. Remember that? We fell. We we all nodded off in class, and I remember yeah. Coach Dunning the next day. He says, us, he goes, babe, babe, uh, I speak to Miss Baranski and uh, she tell me you guys uh, nodded off in class and everything. You know, what, what are we doing here? What, what, what do you have to say for yourself? And you know, we know the answer, but you can't say what it is. And I, I remember looking at him, but I remember thinking, you just ran us, for, you ran us nonstop right before. We had a full day of school. Then we had practice. You ran the crap out of practice, like three and a half hours, four hours long. And then we went to class at night. Class. Maybe like nine and a half minutes to get from one side of campus to the to the next. Showered, eat. You got to shower, eat, and get from one side of campus to the next in like nine and a half minutes. Right. So <laughs> now we had a full day. We were just ran to death. Then we then we had food in our stomach, and then now we have to sit at a night class learning business calculus. So 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 that we look. I remember that we all nodded off. Even Baker did. So that's why I knew we were tired. And that. Yeah. that uh, but I'll never forget that practice. It was, it's all good times. Uh, that, that's a legendary practice. But um, it's so funny because it just it just makes me think of how, you know, it would be like the most craziest situations, or they would try to create the most crazy situations to teach to make us, you know, have teaching points, you know, life lessons, you know, to grow as men. But they would say, just get it done. But you're like, but 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 how? Like, how can I do this? Do that? Like you made the point about Alan and um. And uh, Gary, they both had to make the shot. You bet not miss. Right. <laughs> but yet you better get a stop. And it's like, <laughs> but wait. he's like, I don't care. Just get it done. So you like, you got to try to figure it out. But I, I, I love that phrase. I hated that phrase. Right. You know, that age. You know what I mean? But as I got older, it just says, hey, you can't have no excuses, man. Just just no get excuses. It done. You you want to hear you want to hear a get it done moment for me? Yeah. So what people didn't realize before practice. I had to, well, first thing in the morning, I had rehab, right? At six, like 6.30, six o'clock. I had to I had to be in rehab before my 8 a.m. class, yeah. right? So I had to get up, wake up, get to the training room, get up. And it was, a, it was over an hour 
So it was over an hour of uh, rehab. Then to get ready for practice was an hour and 45 minutes after my last class. Right. right? Mm -hmm. Now I have to get out my last class, get from, it was at, um, what was all the way at the other, um, where, where the near St. Rita's, where, where the priest stayed at? Tolentine, yes. It was at Tolentine. So I had to go from Tolentine to the gym, right? Change, then go up and be the Jeff, right? I think I had all of, what was it? So I had that time to do that alone is like 15, 20 minutes, right? Then I had an hour and 45 minutes of uh, rehab and I had to do everything to a T. Remember that yeah. he said, you don't do every second of rehab. That's like skipping practice, okay? Yeah. So now we had two hours. Then I got to get back downstairs. So like two, two hours and five minutes, right? But here's the thing, Kurt, from the end of my class to the to when we're supposed to be on the court doing our set lifts was an hour 45 minutes. <laughs> and I remember telling the coach, coach was like, uh, Jason, you, you're not on the court. You know, not because again, we're there early practice. So if practice started at three. That really meant we we were starting our warm ups at two forty five. And starting warm ups that mean walking on the court. It meant yeah, what, be, what a sweat dry, on. That, yeah. You better not be dry. What a sweat on. You already did your own thing. So really, we're on the court at two thirty. Yeah. So we had to court a half hour doing working out. So when he comes down, you got to be ready to like if he calls a play, you got to be ready to Step pull out, split, yeah, branch, it's time to go. You got to be like, yeah, it's like you get, it's like you five minutes into the game. So anyway, um, I said, coach, I, um, it's an hour. I only have an hour, 45 minutes, but I only have, uh, but I need two hours and five minutes to literally get everything done because I have to do, it's an hour 45 just to do my um, rehab alone, coach. That's not me. That's not me getting from class, changing and getting up there and getting back down. Yeah. And then he said, he looks at me. And he stares at me, he said, you know what? Get it done. And it walked <laughs> off. <laughs> but it's like, but oh, it's like, man. <laughs> it's oh, like you man. just know, like, I got to figure it out. But you get the wheels turning. You know what I mean? Then you start planning. You know what I mean? It'd be right. those moments. I guess those situations where maybe people would make excuses for us before. Uh, it was just growing. You know what I mean? Trying to right. build, you know, some, some men. So, but yeah, like I said, very, very frustrating when you're at that age. But when you get older. Oh, very you, frustrating. You like, and, 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 and to the young guys, yeah, but it's yeah, funny. It, and to the young guys, I always say, um, I remember, I remember when we were playing against UConn. That's when they had Ben Gordon, Talik Brown, Ameka Okafor. Not to mention the other young guys, Charlie Vinaway, with Josh Boone, mm. um, uh, Marcus Williams. They had, they had everyone. They were just loaded, loaded. Rudy Gay. They had all of that on the same team, and and, and Charlie. Rudy, no, Josh Rudy, Boone. Rudy didn't play with Omeka. Like that, Rudy, Rudy was later. It was just Omeka. Yeah, you're right. You, Rudy's one year under. Josh. Charlie was there. Wasn't Charlie, Charlie? No, no. Charlie was there. I was sophomore year because Charlie was a freshman. Yeah, but he didn't play. He was coming up the bench a little bit. Boom was playing. No, but that was my point. They had those guys on the team. I think Rudy yeah. was the same class as Jim Charlie. Strong, strong. I mean, they, they, they had at least like, they were like the Lakers. They had like seven pros. Six, 10, 6, 11 dudes on a squad that all could right. like, play really really well so they were a challenge and they had those guys and i remember i remember looking and saying we don't care who anyone have we're gonna we're gonna we're playing the games to win and he and he puts us in a video room and he says uh why are we gonna beat uconn why, why why do you believe we could beat uconn and he goes one by one and then some people said well well with the game on the line i feel like i can take ben with the game on the line i feel like we can score with the game on the line and we just kept going down and down and then he waits and then after everyone spoke, he says, I know we arrive when you guys start saying we can beat whatever team because with the game on the line and I need to get a stop, I'm stopping them. And I think that changed because we were younger than us, freshmen, sophomore, that, and that particular conversation was sophomore year. Our junior and senior year, we had the attitude of, yeah, I can give you buckets, especially you, especially junior year. I mean, you, man. Yeah, Kirk could go for 30, and we knew that. And that's what all the talented guys around you. You'll go for 30, but our attitude was, Kirk, you know, whoever we're playing against, if it's a perimeter guy, guard him on the perimeter, lock that up. And, you know, with me, my attitude, my whole entire game, I, I hung my hat on defense. So I remember we, uh, I had a rule. 
we can't lose to Boston College in Georgetown. I took that personal, even though they had Craig Smith and they had Roy Hibbert and Jeff Green, because my attitude was, if we lose to them, that means those guys got the best of me, and that's not happening. You know, that, that, that was my attitude. And, and it was our team attitude about just playing defense. And when we junior, then we, again, that was our junior, senior year, and it got even better because when Kyle Lowry came, practices were so nasty. It changed in a good way. We used to walk into practice. I don't know if you remember this. We'll walk into practice and then we'll look at each other and we'll, knew, we'll know who was getting paired up with who. So it's rather you and I was on the same team or I had me and A. Ray and it was you and Randy, right? Mm-hmm. And then Bump or Mike or, or Kyle, right. whoever, you know, we split up. And I remember the attitude would be, oh yeah, we're going to get, like, I'll look at A. Ray and look at Randy and be like, oh yeah, Randy don't want this today. Yo, yo oh, A. Ray, yes, crack him, crack him today. And like, that was our attitude and we got it. And we understood the drills because remember, if we lost the drills or a suicide, then every now and then coach would be like, every drill that you lost was a double suicide. And then you had to run into the next drill and have enough energy to make sure you better win that. So I remember that. And and you do like, do you remember those times? You do you remember uh like what was your thought? Remember how hard did we go when he used to say the double suicides? I mean, we went hard, man. We went hard. I mean, we went hard from the rip because the thing about us, like we we enjoyed to compete. I mean, when coach had to tell us, okay, guys, you guys, got, we, we need you guys to stop talking trash to each other and things like that. <laughs> he's getting out of hand. We never would fight. It never got into like, let's fight, but it would just get into those competitive, personal, right. let's go. We would still run offense, but you right. knew where the ball was going because we all went, but you knew once that guy got it, they were going, they right. were going hard. And everybody, you know, had something they wanted to prove individually as well. Uh, to themselves, um, but it, it was it was just fun. It was it was epic. Um, I we we enjoyed practice going against each other. Remember Mike and maybe talk, not the duration, but we talk enjoyed. about Mike and talk about Mike and Kyle. Remember how many practices got to get stopped because of them too? Oh man, that <laughs> that that was the that was the best. Um, because Kyle came in there super duper cocky. Um. You know, being a home, you know, homegrown guy from Philly, I have reputation. And but I guess he just didn't know who Mike Nardi was. You know, Mike Mike was just as just as nasty as, as this cow. Yep. You know, yep. just just, you know, wore it differently. You know, Cal verbalized it, you know, wore it on his sleeve. Mike held it in here. And when it was time yep. to get on the court, that's where he did what he had to do. And I yep. think Cal learned very early that, OK, this 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 spot is not easy. Like I'm not I'm not gonna just take his spot. I think people telling me I could come in here, it's not, you know. And um right. that that shows you because when Mike came in there, we instantly went to a whole new level. You know what I mean? It really allowed us to flourish. You know, it allowed Randy and Allen to flourish more. Right. You know what I mean? Which, you know, helped everybody. Yeah, yeah. I mean, we had battles, man, and that I think uh individually. I think you was a part of this. You might not have done it every time, but you was in it most of the time. Remember War, where they had the ball under the basket? It was me, you, Marcus, and Chris Charles. So Marcus Austin, Chris Charles, myself, and you. Oh, yeah, and Bump. So Will Sheridan. And the rule was you have to. So how many? So you, me, Marcus, Chris, Bump. That's five. I feel like I'm missing someone. Marcus, Chris, me, you, Bump. Uh... Okay, that's five. No, that's the five. So there was five of us. We're in the paint. The coach throws the ball up at the rim. That's you so grab cool. the rebound. Yeah, yeah. You right. had to score in order to get out the drill. Oh, but yeah. the catch is, there's no fouls. And oh, we yeah. did not hold. We used to flagrant foul. Remember, we used to literally ball our fist up, lift our hand in the air, and chop you. Remember that? Wrap you around your down neck. Down there with you big guys, man. <laughs> I used to always be saying, Coach, I want to go down there. Yeah. Uh, like, no, you stayed out there. Right. And yeah. I, I mean, I that just, war drill. Yeah, man. How am I going to get a rebound over Jason Frazier and them elbows and Chris Charles and, and Austin? But and Bump throwing his big body helped, around? It helped me out a lot because I had to be crafty, use my quickness a little bit. But, I mean, it was it was rough down there. I, I definitely didn't win many of those games. Yeah, that was fun, man. That, that was fun times. That was fun times. Yeah. So – um, so here's what happened. So we graduate. Well, 
now I graduate and the class goes on, you took the medical uh, redshirt year, right? right? And then you had a senior year and then you had, uh, I think you had a second tier, was it? Wasn't it? Uh, so yeah, I had the second tier. Remember in practice going into our senior year, it was like the third or fourth practice our senior year, I, I toured again, going up for a dunk. Right. Uh, so, yeah. so then you do. Here's the thing. One thing I can respect: you fought back, and you fought back hard. And you wasn't as athletic, and I can um, uh, empathize with that. You wasn't as athletic after the second tier. But what a lot of people realize afterwards, even after you graduated, you, there was a point where you got back your health for the most part. And overseas, and I remember, I remember you came during the off season, and your shoulders was real wide, and your chest was real big. You you had all this, you know, you were built. And I remember you, you was like Jay. You came to hug me, I had to push you off. I'm like, get get away from me with your big self. <laughs> I remember that. But uh, talk talk about some of your experience overseas, the, the um, different places you taught, you played with. You know, what what are some things that you took away playing on the court and also living as a grown man? abroad, uh, uh, you know, abroad? Well, definitely uh, that first year overseas was um, huge, huge wake up call for myself. Uh, I went from this bubble, essentially Villanova, this network, and then cast it, you know, over somewhere in Cologne or Germany, which is a very, very, very nice city. I highly recommend <laughs> if anyone's in Germany, Cologne is a very, very good city. Um, but I wasn't fully healthy. I mean, even my, my fifth year, I was still battling injuries. Right. Um, which you see now with guys and players, I felt like we were developing that back then. You right. know, we were doing a load management with you kind of, but I think it, 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 it escalated to me a little bit further. I think he took a little mm -hmm. bit further with me. Um, probably because I probably was a little bit more healthier than you were. Right. But I still wasn't right. You know what I mean? Right. So I was like, literally just showing up to the game, working out before the game, my body would be shot. You know what I mean? Practice, I couldn't do two days in a row, three days in a row. So he really had to manage me. So after my senior year, um, I go to the summer league. I do well in the summer league, actually. I actually thought I was going to sign with the team, but uh, things didn't work out. Go to Germany, and uh, I go, I play for a coach who, uh, is known not to be the best coach when it comes to players' health. Uh, right, right, right. Like he's actually was banned in certain countries, you know. But right. whatever. Uh, but again, the team, the club I played for, uh, was a was a was a um, Euroleague team. So right. I, I was like, whatever. Like I don't care. I just want to play. Right. I get there, and uh, he essentially with our team, not just me ran us into the ground and me right. having pre-existing ailments and still trying to get myself back. It, it, it knocked me down three or four levels. It took me another like two years to get my health back. And while I was still playing, like, cause when I came home, remember I was like, I'm retiring. And uh, remember I went to go see that doctor, Dr. Keith. Right. And I, I went to work with him and he right. said he could help me get back to playing. I didn't believe him, but he did. And then I said, Jay, I think I found someone. Mm -hmm. And I sent him to you. And I also found, I sent him to Alvin Williams. And I think Jay Law tried. I think Alvin wound up finishing his career after a couple of appointments with him. Mm -hmm. But um, that allowed me to extend my career a couple of years. I definitely, you know, would say Dr. Pine um, and, and those guys. And, and you know, my, my, my agent at the time, uh, Yurik, who... I retired. I mean, I, I must have had about six or seven agents call me. I hung up every last one of them and said, I'm never playing basketball again. And, you know, after one conversation with him, him introducing me to the doctor and showing me that I can still play, I did it. And, um, yeah. Yeah. Got yeah. Some... Well, so what were some, actually... some of your highlights? What were some of your highlights overseas? Because you, uh, you, you're, you're a pretty modest guy, Kurt. Like you, like people again. Everyone knows about Randy. Knows about A Ray. But if you look at the games, if you look at the records, if you look at many different things, you was that first guy up. You know, in terms of putting it out on the court, you were that guy. 
you know, and then when you went down, that's when Randy really stepped into his own. And A-Ray was already smooth sailing the whole entire time. He just got better. So yeah. that's one thing. But then overseas, you, 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 had, uh, you had a real good uh, couple of years. You had a spike. You know, what, what, was, what was some of your most memorable moments? Like, what did, what did you take away the most in, as a player this time on the court? I would say, you know, my, my professional career didn't go as well as I wanted to, only because I was never fully, fully healthy. Um, I battled a lot, you know, with injuries still, little nagging things over the years. I felt I was played a little bit out of position, you know, mm -hmm. um, sometimes. Um, different different game, definitely a different game. It was an adjustment. Um, I was still battling some some inner demons that wouldn't allow me to be present, if that makes sense, you know? Mm -hmm. I think that affects anyone when you're not present in the moment. Right. Um, because your mind is just elsewhere. Uh, I think, you know, just the, the, the physical, you know, ailments and things popping up, I think that really, you know, messed me up a little bit mentally. I didn't have the career I wanted to have over there. I mean, I, do, I did have natural ability, still could play, but, I don't think my heart was in it as mm -hmm. much as it should have been uh, just because I wasn't as present. And I right. definitely, I cut it short. Like I shouldn't have uh, been done as early as I was, but I just wanted a new change, you know, and I wanted to get out of the training room. Right. Be just on every, I mean, everyone's situation is different. I mean, I you, you came room. back, you came yeah. back, um, you were doing, you, you were doing very well in the um, insurance business. Mm -hmm. uh, you work for other big Fortune 500 companies. I know uh, Mason, WB Mason, and I know um, you, uh, like you, you, and you're still doing great. And then I, I know there's a couple of organizations that's trying to steal you, you know, yeah. from from certain places, especially with the pandemic and everything happening. They're trying to they're trying to uh, they're trying to get your talent, you know, to their organization. I mean. Uh, I, Companies will be very smart, you know, and fortunate if they do pry you away and then they do show you a certain package, you know, sure. to have you jump on board, you know, because you're that guy. But, um, Kurt, thank you so much for being on. Sure. Definitely appreciate you. You know, we end one way, one way, one way only. Once a Wildcat. Always a Wildcat. Always a Wildcat. Yeah. These up, baby. Yeah, I know, see you. Man. Thanks for having me. Take care. Thank you.